say, my dear subjects, okay? She said to the new king of Canada, I have renewed the bargain. I have fired Hudson. So we know there was acts, violation of acts way back then too that I feel is still continuing on to this day because bargains like this have been changed. I don't know, people back then thought it was for the betterment of our people, but I know it's not because it has been detrimental, negligent, and at times it has created deaths in my family and I can speak to it. If anybody in any committee or any government want to call me up on this, I am willing to go and go into court and present my facts as it is. The Queen says that I am not to be taxed in this territory. She says it's free traveling all over Canada. Any place you go, if you want a house in Canada, you go to the superintendent, put in your order, and he will see that it is built. It will cost you nothing. They will pay for it. I will put in the warden to mine your game. Wherever your animal will make its tracks in Canada, you can follow it until you get it. If the whites want your animal, they have to pay for it with a license but yet I have to pay for a license. We are being charged under different acts, including these types of acts, income tax acts, that evicts Dene tribal sovereign people from their land. This is not the relationship that was conducted in the past by my blood ancestors. That's what I know today. If you work for a white man, they cannot garnish your wages, but yet I have had my wages garnished. I have been fired because I have presented at the Tolson River Dam. I didn't go after you guys, you government, for putting the funds in there to mine training society. I didn't. I let it go because I know that one day there will be another process that I can bring all of this to. So the whites will have to pay the taxes, which we're discussing now. You are entitled to 3% of the taxes and 3% of the timber and 3% stumpage besides and 5% of the mines. If you have money in the ban, it is 5%. Also, game money is yours. If the whites crowd you, you are to go to the superintendent and put in your complaint, and he will take it to the lawyer, and he will be prosecuted. The bargain is made, and I am sending you a medal as good as gold because, remember, she titled this to the new king of England, and this agreement was for specifically for the Dene people in this territory because of the fur trade between Hudson and remember, this institution I learned, I researched, goes right back to that Virginia company of trade. And this is what this is all about. The bargain is made, and I am sending you a medal as good as gold, and we know that there has been medals passed around. As long as there is an Indian in the country, generation to generation, I am an Indian that they call, I am Dene. I am a tribal, sovereign Dene woman. I did not immigrate here. My ancestors did not immigrate here to be called civilian and to be put in the mainstream of these institutions and corporations to be taxed on our lands, taxed under the education tax, because that's what I had to pay. As a Previous Dene National Chief, I've made presentations on this and it was ignored. Instead, I was ridiculed, I was laughed at. Still to this day, because of my ideology, my thinking. Because if the Queen made this bargain on your behalf and your descendants, why are we 
getting taxed to the point where we are getting evicted from our land for, for example, recreational use. You guys have big ads in the paper. Please identify citizens of the Northwest Territories. Please identify recreational use. In the meantime, my family, my clan is getting eviction notice, getting called squatters. How could we be squatters on our own land when a municipality of this yellow knife is within only 10 kilometers? The government of the Northwest Territories has no jurisdiction outside the 10 kilometers, but yet this government has assumed that. And this is why I need to come and question and present before committees to help me understand what happened. Why are we being evicted off our lands for, for your recreational purposes? Because the majority of the people working up here are working under the government or under industry. But yet our people, the Denny people, are being taxed, whether it's for land, whether it's for NWT 1% tax, we all have to pay it. That's not right. I was given a figure by a Dene Navajo who studied and went to Harvard and worked at Wall Street. He says, Nolene, I'll give you a rough figure what your Dene people in the north are, are worth because your population is so small. We don't even fit into a corner of Edmonton. That's how small our population is. But yet, we have the richest territory in the world. It always has been, right from the time the Treaty Party came. Our resources have been extracted. Our names have been held in trust. And we, everything to do with our lives have been violated. And this government has created cultural genocide. Just like the judge said, the Supreme Court judge said, this federal government, and remember, every province and territorial government is created under the umbrella of that institution. And that institution, the main institution, was created to receive our royalty monies from the resources and debited out to us. But we were not to be taxed. So I would like this question that was asked of the last presenter, the same question, how will we make it work? What are the solutions? And should, I feel, should be extended to every presentation. Because every time I make a presentation, I'm not asked questions. I do my presentation and I'm dismissed because I feel that the information being presented is not taken seriously, but I take it seriously because this is my truth. You guys came here for an employment contract. I didn't. My bloodline comes here from time immemorial. I could use that word time immemorial because say Yakia. Yastira. The language I come from is one of the oldest languages in the world. And I know that. I researched that. And this is why the Queen had to come and make this bargain to seek permission not to kick us off our land. And what I see here, and I'm going to use these words, treason was committed. When it left her hands and it went into somebody's hands in this on this country here. Somebody along the way changed everything and said that we're civilians. I'm not a civilian, I'm sorry. I am of mixed blood. Yes, I admit I am of mixed blood because I have French. Bill Brown is French. I have Scottish, Mackay. Do you guys want to know why? Because of the fur trade, because of those agreements. But it does not mean that I am not Dene first, because I speak the language I was born in this territory. Everybody else migrated here and set up this institution. 
Therefore, part of my submission was that I would like all of my taxes that I paid, and I'm sorry you missed. This was a good presentation, so I hope you read it later. <laughs> I'm serious. You're Dene. You don't like to pay taxes. I've presented here why we shouldn't. And you as Dene men have a right to protect this bargain for us for the future. Not just because you're in this institution and you swore allegiance to the civilian public, but also remember the civilian public, our names are in the civilian public. Therefore, our rights are in this institution and should be respected, but it's not. This is why I'm asking again to have my file reviewed in the Northwest Territories of every tax I paid and returned to me, or I will be left with no choice but to file and refile a $63 trillion lien against this government, territorial, federal, and all institutions. I filed it March 31st. It was sent here to Bob McLeod, and again, it was ignored. And all the ministers that seen it, oh, good luck, you know. Yeah, laugh, make a joke, but you know what? It comes from my heart. It's for our future generation. You never have. If you know what Yunezaha means, that means for the future, for the water, for the animals, for the people that don't have a voice, for the orphans, because they don't have a voice in this income tax system either, because that's where they started having even multiple infractions against them, because you have to have a credit paper trail, and our people don't have that. So how can they access housing? How can they access the very services that you guys were here to, to provide for us via contracts? So this is why I'm saying, again, I demand my income tax back, and I demand that we have another inquiry into what has happened in this process of taxing Dene people. And I believe that things, the solution will turn around for the Dene people in terms of having a little bit more money to do things, you know, maybe um, be able to pay for childcare. Because remember, this very institution is what tore our families apart for development. This development is a Tolson River Dam that this government is ignoring. Every relocated tribe in Canada has been dealt with except the Russia River people. So tell us, why are we any different? I have not stopped coming to any table to present this. You know that, Kevin. You've heard me speak many times. So thank you. I came here to say what I had to say about the imposition of income tax on the people and why. I may not have said everything that I want to say in writing because I have a hard time. I speak usually from the heart. So, and just to let this government know that I, am, I have filed and this filing will be done probably this week to this government under the child welfare, okay? Because nobody is looking after our interest, literally. So people like myself are going to stand up because I am impacted. I was taken away when I was 14 years old by this government. I was dumped on the street. But thank goodness I had my grandmother's teachings and my stubbornness to survive. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Ms. Villabrun. If, if you want to remain, I think there are some, some comments. And I just wanted to clarify a few things. I, I appreciate that you spoke from the heart. And it, it's, um, uh, the issues you raise are very real issues for, for this government and governments across Canada. And I thank you for being here today. Um, 
As a point of clarification, however, Bill 17 is narrow in scope and does not deal with uh, the issues that you've asked us to look into today. Um, it specifically makes amendments to um, the Income Tax Act to bring it in line with federal statute and, uh, and makes changes to the child tax uh, benefit, as we discussed earlier. Um, when legislation like this comes forward to committee, we are bound by the scope that's being presented. Um, so we, we are unable to look into um, uh, anything beyond that scope um, by matter of procedure. Um, so although we, we have certainly heard what you have, what you have brought forward and we appreciate what you have said um, at, at this time, I, I believe it falls well outside of the scope of this piece of legislation. Um, but that does not mean uh, your submission is at all wasted upon the committee. Um, you certainly uh, heard your words and, and uh, understand uh, your truth as you, as you have put it. Um, now I'll turn to Mr. McNeely as he, uh, he has some comments. Mr. McNeely. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I just wanted to say I, I wasn't here because uh, I didn't want to be here. I had another um, another meeting to go to here from a constituency that flew in from the Satu. Now, as you know, the, this time of the year, our our Satu region's isolated. We've got to fly in and fly out until until the next winter road arrives or the all-weather road arrives. So that's what I was contending with here. So I just wanted for the record to say that there, but I will talk to my colleagues on your presentation and read the Hansard. Must see. Mr. McNeely, is there anything further for this witness? Mr. O'Reilly. Uh, Marcy, thanks for coming, um, uh, Nolene. Um, I know that uh, I just wanted to let you know too that uh, Mr. Bolio uh, has raised the issues of around Russia River both in the House and with us uh, as regular MLAs, so um, he has raised some of these issues and uh, um, just wanted you to know that, but uh, appreciate the, the comments you made today. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. O'Reilly. Uh, Mr. Nick Mayak. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, thanks for your words um, today. I know uh, being from another a different land claims, I, I know the, the struggles and the sacrifices some people make. Um, and not always everybody, but uh, I think um, maybe uh, this is just more of a comment, maybe just on the approach of how how this is going. You may have to get involved with with, with your band and uh, with your MLA. And this is something like, you know, when, when people come to make a difference, I think it's when people actually come together. So I, I think, um, or my advice would be to uh, maybe to form, um, you know, a group that will, that will actually um, make headway on this. It's, it's going to take a long time, maybe not even in your lifetime or my, maybe not even in ours, but um, I think, uh, you know, as you move forward and you, 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 you know, you adapt with in your approach and how you do things, that might, that might help um, the cause. And uh, I know uh, it's not easy, but it takes somebody strong like yourself to, um, to take this on. So I just uh, want to Wish you luck, and we're here too as people and uh, as, as, uh, as MLAs to, to listen. So, thanks for your presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Um Anything further from committee? Right, Ms. Villebrun, I'll allow you a, a brief closing statement. We do have to move on with the rest of our hearing. Would you make no problem? Time? Thank you. Um, just to um, clarify something that you have said about, uh, you know, what I was saying has nothing to do. Well, I need to clarify that too, that everything that has transpired, there's no segregation, and that if there is, that's why we're in trouble, okay? When you talk about, your bill talks about, sure, personal income tax, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about land tax, I'm talking about whatever. They're, it's all relevant. It's all part of it. Maybe you use different wording or terminology, but for me, it's all part of it, okay? And this is what the government has to start doing. This institution has to start stop doing, okay, is segregating. And I feel that this is what has happened with, you know, even child care benefits. If I, w you know, I used to pay and you know, child care benefits, and it took up most of my salary, just, you know, just to work, 
and be away from the clutch of the government because when you're in the system they want to know everything you do so you know for me it's I, I just got to say it you can't it's like your health your safety security everything is all part of our wellness and our well-being so if you take an an attack one component you're attacking every one of the components of our well-being of a Dene to thrive okay and um, I don't look at what I presented as a cause because it's a fact I just read a fact from the Queen's bargain and what I also know, there's something that happened that transpired, okay? And yes, maybe you guys feel because you have that lack of understanding, okay, that you feel it's beyond your scope, it's not in this institution. Well, this institution is acting on behalf of the federal government. Every one of you signed a contract with the federal government, whether it's to deliver or whether it's to um, legislate or to enforce legislation because an act is a legislation. We are tribal Dene sovereign. We have tribal sovereign rights. We don't, our rights should not come under acts. And that's where we are led. And that's what I wanted to ensure that this committee is aware of, that this has transpired, whether you agree or not. So thank you very much for giving me the time. And um, there is a, a copy of the Queen's Bargain. And I will be presenting that Queen's Bargain to every meeting I go to because it is important. There's something that happened here. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Philippe. Uh, committee, we're now uh, concluded with the uh, this stage of the review. And uh, now we will uh, call the minister back in and proceed with the clause by clause review of Bill 17. This committee agree to a clause by clause review of Bill 17, an act to amend the Income Tax Act. Agreed. Thank you, committee. Committee, please turn to page three of the bill. We will defer the page number and title until after consideration of the clauses. Clause one, agreed. Clause two, agreed. Clause three, Agreed. agreed. Clause four, agreed. agreed. Clause five, agreed. agreed. Clause six, agreed. agreed. Clause seven, agreed. agreed. Clause eight, agreed. agreed. Clause nine, agreed. 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 Clause ten, agreed. agreed. Clause 11, agreed. agreed. Clause 12, agreed. agreed. Clause 13, agreed. agreed. Clause 14, Mr. Simpson.
Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move that Clause 14 of Bill 17 be deleted and that the following be substituted. 14.1. This Act, except Sections 6, 7, and 8, comes into force on assent. 2. Section 6 is deemed to have come into force January 1, 2017. 3. Section 7 is deemed to have come into force January 1, 2016. 4. Section 8 comes into force July 1, 2017. Thank you, uh, Mr. Simpson. There's a motion on the floor. The motion is in order. To the motion. Question. Question has been called. All those in favor? All those opposed? All those abstaining? The ayes have it. Uh, motion is carried. Bill 17, an act to amend the Income Tax Act, will be reported to the Assembly as ready for consideration and Committee of the Whole as amended and reprinted. Thank you. Uh, oh, sorry, Minister. <laughs> as long as the Minister concurs. So I'll ask the Minister to indicate his concurrence now. Minister McLeod. Let me give that some thought. <laughs> no, I concur, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Minister. Um, uh, this committee, do we? Uh, we'll, we'll return to the clause by clause uh, uh, review. Clause 14 as amended. Does the committee agree? Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank, um, thank you, committee, for your indulgence. Um, we now return to the bill number and title, Bill 17, an act to amend the Income Tax Act. Agreed? Thank you very much. Uh, the bill as a whole as amended, agreed? Does committee agree that Bill 17, an act to amend the Tobacco Tax Act, is now ready for consideration in committee of the whole as amended and reprinted? Oh, sorry, sorry. Yet yeah, that's completely wrong. <laughs> Does the committee uh, agree that Bill 17, an act to amend the Income Tax Act, is now ready for consideration in committee of the whole, as amended and reprinted? Agreed. Thank you. And I believe there will be a motion on the floor. Mr. Simpson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move the Bill 17, an act to amend the Income Tax Act, be reported to the Assembly as ready for consideration in committee of the whole, as amended and reprinted. Simpson, there's a motion on the floor, and the motion is in order. To the motion. Question. Question's been called. All those in favor? All those opposed? Any abstaining? Motion is carried. Thank you very much, committee. And thank you to uh, the minister and his staff and those who have joined us today. Uh, minister, do you have any closing comments again? No, just, just thank the committee again, and, and I, I think I gave my thanks before, and, and look forward to having the discussion in committee of the whole. Thank you, Mr. Minister, and uh, this now concludes the public portion of the meeting. Okay. Thank you very much.